I suppose you get different reactions from <laughs> different individuals. Um, it's, it's seen as this most terrible form of transphobia by the trans lobby, simply to name a man and say he, that is seen as you're gonna cause his death. You know, it's this terrible thing. So I think the fact that it is perceived as such a terrible thing is telling us this is why it's important that we use it. Um, from women, I've, I get a lot of the time, I think there's a huge sense of relief in the same way that I experience a, a huge relief whenever I hear a woman speaking the truth. Whenever I hear a woman speaking the truth plainly, it's such a relief. And so there's that often laughter, humor, because I don't know, you probably know, you know the, the fairy story, the emperor's new clothes. There's, yeah, so it's that idea that someone's exposing the, the uh, fake nature of it. But interestingly, within this so-called gender critical movement in the UK, I've also experienced a lot of resistance from those women who don't necessarily have a very feminist perspective and who think we have to be nice and in order to persuade people, persuade politicians or persuade, I don't know, people listening or people in the media, we, we have to be very careful and very polite. They often don't like when I or other women use this direct language. I think it's because it exposes that they are using fake, fake concepts as well. But I, there's, a, there's quite a strong, um, a, a strong tendency among some of the groups here to be very obedient, to be very obedient and careful. But I think that's a big mistake. I like what Mary, da you know, Mary Daly's idea, sin big, because you'll be punished even if you're a little itty bitty feminist, you'll be punished in the same way if you're a big, loud, uh, fearless feminist. So be a fearless feminist from the beginning.